Well, I'd been working with Joe for years when we started doing those demos, and he must have known you. Yeah, I think he knew me vaguely, but he did like the rhythm section, well, Graham and I, in the band that we had, Jumbo Roots. So, that, so when he came to do his demos, he asked us if we were interested. You know, within a few months, Joe had uh, got, gotten himself a deal with A&M, and we, all, we got the phone call that we could quit our day jobs. Just purely from a staging point, it's different, because all of us are right up front. Do you know what I mean? As opposed to in the old days where the, you know, the drummer's always like 400 yards at the back, you know. Now we all tend to congregate in a very small area. Because mm -hmm. eye contact's quite important for the whole show. Is it? Yeah. I never look at you. <laughs> that's because I'm too wonderful. <laughs> and it will put you off. Exactly. But uh, no, seriously, eye contact is a, a big point. And playing, obviously. It's, it's a big point. No, I like the trio as well because you've got a bit more freedom. In what way? Try. Well, I mean, the less number of players, I think, the you know. The well, first of all, you can play, you can overplay mm -hmm. a little bit and not not be treading on other people. Yeah. Which I'm really good at overplaying. Unfortunately, it's not actually a good thing. But you are very good at overplaying. So <laughs> somebody, somebody's got to, because I don't. I tend to keep it like nice and steady. You tend to know what he likes. You know, his taste in. From, from my point, you know, like drum fills and where to put, you know I mean? It's the obvious things. Be tasteful. Well, you are Dave Houghton, I mean. Thank you, Graham. You know, always happy. The immortal. I'm a legend, I'm possibly the, I mean, I know this for a fact, I am the best drummer in my house. <laughs> because there aren't any others. But I mean, might, that might extend to my road, but I think there might be someone <laughs> at the bottom of the road who's better than me. <laughs> Have you ever fallen off a drum kit? Yes. <laughs> I can vouch for that. Twice. Once big time with Joe, and once little time when I was very, very drunk. Tell the story about when the when the drum stool broke and, and the shaft went up your bum. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> we played the fastest version of that Bee Gees song. What was that Bee Gees song? You were there. Staying Alive? No. no we used to do... Um, anyway, halfway through the song, it just went... Poof. And I felt it go, and it, the plate had slipped. Saturday Night Fever, isn't it? The plate had slipped, and the pole came up. So immediately I wasn't sat down, I was just stood like that, taking all the weight, and the sweat was like <laughs> running down here. And then there was the time when he leant back against the, what he thought was the back wall, that was at the college and gig, was, only it wasn't the back wall, it was just a scrim, and there was about a foot gap. And then all of a sudden Dave was gone. I was like, where did Dave go? Yeah, I fell off the stage one time. Was that was, night and day? Yeah, it was night and day, and uh, we'd, we'd finished the show. We were playing in a, in a great big gymnasium somewhere, and where they'd built the stage, so it was a high up stage. And uh, we finished the, the set. We came back, oh no, 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 right, wait, we finished the last song, and I went to walk off stage, and I was sort of, you know, I was doing my rock star. Thank you very much, thank you, good evening, thank you. And that, you know, there were some stairs leading up to the stage and I thought I was right by them, but they were actually about three feet behind me. So as I turned to leave the stage, there was just nothing but a drop in front of me. It was, it was about six feet up, you know. So I, I know, my weight was already committed, so I was gone, you know. So uh, my, my instinct, I'm very proud to tell you this, my instinct was to save the bass. So I actually twisted my ankle. Uh, I saved the bass. Yeah. Good boy. How did you save your face after what did I you don't do? Know. Oh no, yeah, save face, forget it. That was too late for that. But, yeah, no, they actually the next gig they had they gaffer tape they got white gaffer tape leading all the way from the stairs to my spot, you know, with arrows and you know and they had a, a, a brace of labradors. <laughs> <laughs> and a white stick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, they teased me about that mercilessly for weeks. I wonder why. <laughs>